In this special episode of Down the Road We Go, we talk to a new friend about her backstory and how it relates to her RVing experiences. So come along for the ride as Down the Road We Go. Well, good morning. This is kind of a special event that we're doing, a, a special episode. We met a really nice lady named Karen up in uh, Sunrise, wasn't it? Sunrise mm -hmm. RV Park up in Kingman. And she was telling us uh, her backstory, and we just thought it was very interesting. And we, we thought we'd get with her and, and uh, see if she could tell everybody that. So, Karen, how did you get into being by yourself in an RV? Can you well, just, just a quick Okay. Background. Okay. Um, well, my uh, my husband and I um, sold our house up in Jackson, Wyoming, um, about three years ago. Okay. And um, at that time, you know, it went on the market and it sold, bam, within ten days, and I had to get out. And I had thought about, you know, what am I going to do? What do I want to do? You know, and that kind of thing, and. Um, and I thought, well, we had done a lot of traveling, you know, we had a small, smaller class C RV. Yeah. Well, I wasn't a stranger to, to, um, traveling in an RV or camper or whatever. <clears throat> and I thought, well, there's so many places that I wanted to, um, explore. My original thought was going to Asheville, North Carolina, where my, um, nephew has a goat farm. Because I've heard a lot about Asheville, and you know, it's kind of the the cultural um, environment that I that I was looking for. Uh -huh. Put everything in storage, and you know, that was in the house. Uh, <laughs> but I bought a 1978 GMC Classic motorhome, oh. and I I always loved those motorhomes, yeah. and. Um, so anyway, I bought it. There was a fella in Jackson that was selling one, and um, and so I took off, and I had that thing overloaded. I mean, I had so much stuff in it. All I did was purge on the road. I um, my first place that I went to was St. George area. This was two, three years ago. Um, and I was just so claustrophobic. Well, my, my water heater burst. Um, RV tech came and looked at it, and he said, well, we've got to order you a new water heater, blah, blah, blah. So um, when the water heater came in, I had to take it to the shop. And when he was done working, he said, would you like to go out sometime? <laughs> <laughs> so I said, yeah, that would be nice. So anyway, I started dating um, this fella, and... Uh, he, you know, he said, well, why don't you just move in with me instead of trying to live in your RV for an enormous amount of money? It was really nice. Um, he wasn't there much, which was good. <laughs> he was always working. That helped, huh? Yeah. Um, but anyway, the place that he worked for, um, you know, were selling RVs and that kind of thing. And I went to help volunteer. This was like a big, you know, it was just for a day. I saw this thing on the lot. I thought, oh, that's too big. I, I could never, you know, I could never handle that. Well, <laughs> I walked inside and they, of course, they had it laid out and everything. And the price on it was 15,900 $15, bucks. I looked at the speedometer it only had 26,000 miles on it. It's a 1998. And I'm looking, I'm going, oh my God, it's a space. This is it's it. got so much space. <laughs> and yeah, yeah. yeah. And I thought, well, for that price, I can't, I can't not yeah. buy it. Yeah. And I wasn't even worried about my GMC. Yeah. I thought, oh, they'll take it on trade, you know, whatever. Well, they didn't. Anyway, I bought it and moved into it. And I left the GMC down there with another friend. Um, and he said he'd try to sell it for me. And I thought, well, that's great. Moved in. Took to the road, 200 miles later, the engine blew. Oh, no. I had to have it towed 75 miles to Woodruff, Utah, where I finally, I made about 30 phone calls trying to find somebody to help me. Um, finally found a, a place there, uh, mechanics that work on diesel trucks and things like that. So 
got it in there, they diagnosed it, and the nearest they could figure is that it sat for too long and that the gas detonated. Six weeks later, in the meantime, I was towing my car with a U-Haul dolly. So I drove up to Bondurant, said goodbye to the fella down there. I mean, we yeah. in St. George, we were kind of done. And um, so anyway, um, and Bruce and I have been off and on, you know, for a while. So anyway, I moved in back in with Bruce. Bruce lived in a, a really sweet little cabin uh, on 10 acres in Bondurant, Wyoming. We spent the winter last year, not this past, but last yeah. year. And it was hard. It was really, it was a rough winter. And I thought, well, I've got this thing and it was just sitting there all winter. And I said, you know, I've got to, I got to do something mm -hmm. different. I'm a very independent person and so is Bruce. So it wasn't like we were um, joined at the hip or anything yeah. like that, you know. In September, there was a forest fire that started and it was, you know, you could see the smoke off in the distance. Um, but it wasn't anything that we were really too worried about. Just like that, within probably two or three days, we were evacuated. Jeez. It was coming so fast and furious. The winds had kicked up. They were going in all different directions where, um, you know, the the Forest Service couldn't get a handle on it. Right. They called in. They called in the fire. Fighters. We had like a thousand firefighters on that fire. We had three bomber planes with, you know, retardant going over constantly and helicopters and small planes. It was the, the biggest fire in the country at yeah. that time. This was before the California fire. Um, How much time did you have to get out? 20 minutes. So you had 20 minutes to pack everything and get yep. out. We had 20 minutes. <clears throat> and of course, in order to get out, um, we had to drive four and a half, five miles through the forest service or forest road. Yeah. And then you get to Hoback Ranches. And so So you basically probably had to drive through the fire to get out, didn't well, you? Well the fire was coming, <laughs> but I, I just had to, you know, drive like a bat out of hell, basically, mm -hmm. this thing. Yeah. And it was up this big huge steep hill and you know narrow roads and you know rocks and so on and I beat this thing up they evacuated us over well anybody that had something you know a camper or something that they could stay in yeah um, were across the highway and so we were kind of sitting there across the highway from you know Hoback ranches or the entrance to the to the area and we were watching it and it would just at night it was just unbelievable you know you could just see the the flames over here and over here and you know you just didn't know where the fire was and the smoke was so bad um that the forest service couldn't even tell us if any homes had burned it happened so fast yeah that all of a sudden it went from well we don't know if any houses had burned to, well, we, we know that a couple of places have burned, whether it was a house or out, outbuildings or whatever. Um, okay, 20 houses have burned now. And I think there are probably about 150 some odd houses in it that area. Burned. Big, It's a big, huge area. All of a sudden, um, we saw the flames come over the ridge. That looks like our area that looks like a house just went up yeah. and they were trying to tell me, no, no, that's just a tree, another tree and you know, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. I said, no, that looks, that's black smoke. That looks like, that looks like a house. Yeah. And, um, so anyway, at that point, all hell broke loose. Everybody was panicking going, Oh God, Oh God, Oh God. We didn't find out until maybe, I don't know, two or three days later that our place, was gone. Bruce's place was gone, yeah. along with three of our neighbors. Um, that the fire just came over and and wiped out everything. And uh, but they couldn't tell us because the smoke was so bad and they didn't know. Yeah, yeah. A lot of times they don't know until the fire's out and they right. can get in there because right. it's just so quick. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So we got confirmation that uh, he basically lost everything. Of course, I lost things that I had in the cabin and yeah. 
luckily I had this, this motorhome. Um, two weeks after the fire, um, he did, we, we did have a place to stay momentarily, you know, oh. two weeks, about two weeks to the day after we learned that his place went, um, he started losing his, his motor skills. He started, he couldn't walk. He was shuffling. And this is a very strong, you know, in shape, yeah. you know, man. And, um, it got worse and worse and worse. And he was talking, he could talk okay, but he couldn't, he, all of a sudden his arms went, I'm going, okay, he can't walk, he can't, you know, and I'm thinking stroke. Right. He's having a stroke. I said, I want to take you to the hospital, which was 50 miles away. Yeah. The next morning, uh, he wasn't any better. I said, I'm taking you to the hospital. I mean, I had to pretty much help carry him, mm -hmm. scoot himself down the stairs and get him into my car. I said, you sit here, I'll be right back. And I went inside and I called 911. Here, meet me, you know, mm -hmm. start driving down here. Right. And I said, I'm in a 2008 Ford Escape. Um, I'm gonna have my flashers on and I'm gonna be driving like a bat out of hell. But about a mile down the road, there was a state trooper um, parked on the side of the road. I, I stopped really quick in the middle of the road and he got out of his car and walked over. I said, please escort me. I said, I think he's having a stroke. I've got to get to Jackson. I've got an ambulance to meet me. And he turned around. He said, you bet. He said, I'll, I'll follow you. He, he told dispatch that, that we were coming to. Finally, he passed me and started driving faster, leading, leading, the, way. Way, leading yeah. the way. Yeah. There's a place called Hoback or Hoback Market, whatever. And I came around the corner. There's an ambulance parked on the other side of the highway, just waiting. And so the ambulance pulled into the Hoback Market. They immediately got the door open, carried him out of my car, got him to the hospital. The emergency room doctor there said, we need to get him to Idaho Falls. He is hemorrhaging. His brain is hemorrhaging Ooh. from both sides. So we're going to take him over to Idaho Falls. I did surgery on emergency surgery that afternoon. Neurologist, after the surgery, he came out. He said, for the neurosurgeon, and he said, he's going to be okay. Oh, that's good. Yeah, he's so going to be okay. So how's he doing now? He's doing great. Yeah. So I always ask him. And he says, well, I still have those dents in my head, you know. Anyway, but he is, he's doing great. That's good. He that's is good. still, I mean, he's still recovering. He's like probably about 85% back now. So after, after all that hardship, how did you get on the road and end up in courtside? I'd heard about it. I, I, I heard a lot about it. I've met people, you know, in different places that said, you should go to courtside. You should go to courtside. So I said, okay, well, here I am. I, um, I, I didn't know what to expect. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy here. It's, it is it's courtside. <laughs> you uh, almost have to turn your clock back about 40 or 50 yes. years. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I started watching, well, I met you guys up in Kingman. Yeah. And you told me about your, your YouTube channel and yeah. I watched that. And then you told me about RV or TV yeah. for us and I watched his. And so I kind of had an idea of what I was getting into, but I, yeah. it's, I mean, to be here, it's, it's different. different. Yeah. yeah. And I don't have a car, so that's, that's a lot yeah. of the problem too. So you're but, also now having problems with your RV. Yeah. It's got a knock, an yeah. engine knock. Yeah. Ray and I looked at it the other day and listened to it. And I think it's, you know, cause you had the engine compartment off. Right. And we got to, I'm not a good mechanic. I mean, I can work on things, but. Yeah. But to Ray and I both, it sounds like it has something to do with a front lifter up there, uh, mm -hmm. which could be an easy fix, or, or and, but you're having a hard time trying to find somebody to fix it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's so the problem. That's, we thought we would interview you and see if, if uh, we could maybe find somebody in the area oh, that watched the video you know, that might be able to come over and, and check it out. So, uh, yeah. but you right now you're in Rice, Rice Ranch. Rice Ranch, okay. yep. You're stuck here now, really, and much. courtside, it, the big tent's starting to roll down, which is kind of good and kind of bad because a lot of people will leave it. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. So, I went over there yesterday, but yeah. I couldn't believe how many non-RV vendors oh, yeah, there are. Oh, yeah, But another good question, too, is what do you think of RVing now as far as, you know, uh, being on the road by yourself and, and uh Well, if I didn't have... <laughs> if I didn't have so many problems... Well, and the other thing is my dog, Annie... Yeah, she's, she's going bald, and I think it's 
you know, all the stress and the yeah. thyroid issue and all that, but it's getting worse and I need to, um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do about her. Um, so you really, need, you really need help with the motor home motor and then trying to get Annie someplace. So. Well, and I need to, I mean, she's okay. Yeah. You know, I, cause I took her to the vet up in Kingman. Oh, did you? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. They, they just get thought blood it was stress and, and thyroid. And, I think so. I think okay. that's all what it is. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and I don't feels, have a car. She feels your stress. Exactly. You know, so the, the animals do that. Yeah. You know? So if you're stressed, she's stressed. Yep. Yeah. And I know I, it's a stressful situation being without transportation and yeah. your home isn't, you can't move it. So. Right. That's yeah. why I said I'm going to rent a little scooter. I, I need things like milk. Oh, you know, yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah. Basic things. And yeah. decent dog food. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. I'm going to like I said, make this a special episode and we'll probably get it out here in the next couple of days. Really? Okay. Uh, so hopefully somebody sees it, might be able to help out and right. you know, we'll put it on YouTube and Facebook and all that stuff. So hopefully that'll help. I wish we could stay around and help you out. Um, we, we've got oh, reservations. I know. Uh, it's okay. 26 to leave. So yeah. yeah. Where are you going from here? We're yeah. going to Yuma. Well, you know, we wish you all the luck and, and oh, uh, you got our number and stuff. Give us a call and let us know how things are going and you know, oh. what's going on. I appreciate it. Was it was really great meeting you. And well, it was great it, meeting you guys, too. It's, yeah. it's, hearing your story was, you know, although everybody has adversity in the past mm -hmm. or, or in the future, so yeah. if we could just stick to it and, and power on. Uh, yeah. That's, yeah. Yep. Tomorrow's another day. Yeah. Well, thank you for uh, inviting us into your home. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. If you'd like to contact Karen about her RV situation and help her out, I put her information in the comments below. Thanks again for watching Down the Road We Go.